Charlemagne orders them all to be put to the sword. The whole city turns against them. The scorpion starts firing at them. The pikemen begin stabbing them. What's up, everybody? Lemonade here. This is a scenario review. This is the Great Saxon Revolt. Now, this was originally put in the Age of Kings Gold Edition back in the day, say the 2000s, how long ago that feels now. But it features Charlemagne in the Saxon Wars, and it was originally made in German on Age Arena, and it was translated into English and several other languages, but it could only be accessed through a special goodies folder, which I will link to in the description with the contents of that folder contain so everyone can play it. We begin with a force based at the Suntal Mountains led by a Count Lorad awaiting reinforcements from Count Thury, but we will not be waiting for the Saxons or the reinforcements. We're just going to rush in and look for them and bring them to fight against our force. Some brief reconnaissance shows us that the Saxons are in fact right in front of us. This is the Ingern Saxons who is green or the Angravari, as the Romans referred to them, and on the other side, the Frisians and the Westphalian Saxons begin their assault. So, this doesn't look like it's going to end very well for our poor Frankish force led by Count Rarad at the base of these mountains. The Battle of Suntul is lost, and Siegfried is the only survivor who has escaped from the carnage and will be the one to inform Charlemagne of this disaster that has happened. Siegfried comes across a bridge with some not-so-friendly Saxons, but he is quickly able to charge at them, and as he is a hero and they are weak spearmen, he does plenty of damage and is able to take them out left and right. Siegfried, after his little hike, comes across a friendly face at last, an allied Saxon of King Charlemagne, and he will inform the king to the south, who is gathering an army to go up north, this is a great army that the Franks will be using to make their way to the city of Vernon, but they will have to cross the thick marshlands who will be a good ambush spot for the Saxons. The cavalry will be detached from the main force and be used as a rapid scouting force to be able to quickly spot any potential enemies or possibly allies even, maybe. The first encounter we have is a red Westphalian monk all alone who will make good sword practice for my cavalry, as they will be having a lot of fights in the future, I bet. The Saxons are fooling themselves as they think a couple palisades are able to stop superior Frankish cavalry. With the units reconnected again, we can continue our little trip. The villagers cry out for help from a Saxon attack, and help we shall give them. Those villagers will be safe after we take out all these Saxon warriors inside of their little town. But the bad news is they won't be of much use because we have no resources at all. Time to return the favor on the Saxons is what I would be saying if we didn't have yet another set of palisades to break through and destroy. Unfortunately. Not like it matters because you can just go around them entirely. The path is blocked yet again as the Saxons seem to have an endless supply of palisades and wood. They have quite an ambush set up for us up here, so there's going to be quite a few losses for the Frankish forces, but the scorpions will be taken care of by the axemen, who will be able to quickly destroy them before they can do any real true damage on our forces. Path is clear, onto Verdun we go. The Saxons set off another ambush, this time with tons of pikemen to attack my cavalry as well as some champions to come out of the trees and assault my army as we are attempting to make it to Vernon. Despite being harassed as much as a French person is about losing World War II, we have made it to the bridge only to find that it is in ruins, so we are going to have to detach some soldiers and look for another crossing. Another crossing has been found, which will be great news for my army, who is now approaching it, and now also saving a monastery from being attacked. On the other side of the bridge is an Ingern Saxon camp, who spring an attack that will temporarily stop my army from reaching Vernon, and there has been quite a few losses in the units now. As you can see, they are not as strong as they once were. The city will not let 
the soldiers in until they see Charlemagne himself, who, upon doing so, they were ally, and Charlemagne is asked to meet with his Saxon counts at the castle within the city. The Saxon counts ask what can be done to support you, Charlemagne. Following a brief talk with the Saxon counts, Charlemagne asks to see the Saxon nobility, who begin arriving from the northern gates in the form of a huge line of teal kings. The Saxons have gathered in a huge mob, surrounded by pikemen and towers in the courtyard of the city of Vernon. Charlemagne orders them all to be put to the sword, the whole city turns against them, the scorpion starts firing at them, the pikemen begin stabbing them, some Frankish soldiers even come into the mix, attacking them, and this will be done until there is no survivors. This event is an illustration of the historical massacre of Verdun that took place during the Saxon Wars, where Charlemagne ordered 4,500 Saxons to death in the city of Verdun. Siegfried arrives to the city to speak with Charlemagne, and he reveals to him a bridge to the south over the river Hunt, which would be useful to attack the Frisian base there. Speaking of bridges, the one that we encountered earlier that was destroyed has been rebuilt, so we can now use it to cross over the river. The Franks have arrived to assault a tiny little Saxon village in the swamps. Oh boy. Pagan Saxons have even stolen one of our relics from one of our monasteries, so we're going to have to take that back to make sure we can use it. This was not a successful attack. Nothing like building an eco from zero resources. Round two of the Westphalian Saxon base versus the Frankish army. Change of tactics this time, we're going to attack another gate instead of the same one that got the last army killed. The throwing axeman spam should be very useful and breaking through, and a eunuch could just walk around the palisades, great. Burn the village down! One out of three relics has been secured, two to go. The Frisians have attacked my town center, but were unable to do much damage to it. They also attacked my army with some cab archers, but again, they were very small and got beat up very fast. We finally have reached a bridge on the river Hunt, and we can begin our attack on the Frisian base. Let's see what they can do. Frisians give us a lackluster welcoming party as there is no one there. The Frisians have made the mistake of hiding a relic away in their territory, but unfortunately there will be collateral damage. I didn't have to destroy this town, but I did it for realism. With the Frisian base renovated, we can now mass produce rams to finally get that relic. This villager thought he was safe collecting gold, but he's not! A few Frankish adventurers have discovered yet another palisade, but this one has tons of Frisians hiding behind it, and heavy scorpions shooting at them. So even if they do get this hole open, I think they're all going to be dead. Like a unwanted house guest, our battering rams have begun knocking on the gates of the Frisian castle, where the relic is hidden away in their monastery. That's the second relic, now to find a hidden away Friar Tuck to get the last one. The Saxon gang is slowly making their way to fight the other Saxons. Round two of the Battle of the Wooden Pass begins with more throwing axemen and a few knights to help tank some of the shots from the scorpions. The scorpions are doing tons of damage and they just take out the cavaliers we had. And the throwing axemen are coming into big effect here, hitting champions, occasionally hitting knights, but they seem to be slowly getting overwhelmed themselves. But it looks like the Saxon gang is arriving soon. The heroic Saxon counts charge in a battle, each one of them taking on enemy Frisian soldiers who decide to make a run for it. We'll let them get away for now, but the counts choose to charge forward, taking on another arbalist stuck in a hole, breaking through the palisades and destroying a couple scorpions that are blocking the way. The hole has been cleared and there's nothing left. We have returned to the swamps to destroy the last Saxon resistance and probably Shrek's house. This gate was giving me a strange look, so we decided to just ram it down. A Frankish monk convinces a Frisian villager to join our side. Ingern Saxons accept defeat and resign from the game. Passing by the battlefield, 
at which we lost. Friar Tuck has been found, choosing instead to go by Brother Tuck. He was in a hut down by the river. He has a transport ship, which will give us the last relic we need. The transport ship just needs to disembark, and we're off. And Friar Tuck, Brother Tuck, is going to go get the last relic we need. The last relic is put into the monastery. That will be the end of this scenario. This was the Saxon Revolt. Very good map for 2000. I can't believe Age of Empires is that old. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye.